march in civic disruption by every means we must start to go onto the front foot we christians in the park have defeated the dawagandists intellectually in this park we have beaten them on every argument we have destroyed all of their criticisms against the christian faith all of their major speakers now run from all of the major Christian speakers. But I am not satisfied only with an intellectual victory. I want this park to be Christian. I want this corner to be a stronghold of Christian evangelism. And the only way that that will happen is if Christians across denominations unite, Roman Catholic, Protestant and Orthodox together yeah. in glorifying the Trinity and proclaiming that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Ladies and gentlemen, we need in this park Christian men and women of courage and fortitude. We need in this park Christians of emotional stability. People who aren't coming here because they're needy or because they need something that they're not getting in their private life and they're coming here to find it. And we need Christians down here who have the intellect to defend the Christian faith or the fortitude to support those that are and the physical strength and conditioning not to be intimidated by the gangs of thugs of Islamists that have come to dominate this park. That is what we need, and we need it here in numbers. And so if you hear in that description yourselves, and you can get to Speaker's Corner on a regular basis, I invite you to come down and support the evangelism that we are doing here. Because in this park, Muslims are becoming Christians. From the work in this park, Muslims are becoming Christians. Islam stands for me, for I love sincerely every Muslim. Because that all Muslims, I love sincerely all Muslims. Because I do. I don't come at them with hatred. I want to set them free from the religion that is turning them into degenerates, that is turning them into thugs, that is turning them into supremacists, because they have a bad example. Muhammad, a paedophile, a rapist, a slave trader. But we have a better example in Jesus Christ. Amen. A man who had no armies and yet has conquered the world, has had no qualifications and yet everyone calls him a teacher, was never a physician and yet they call him a healer, has ruled no earthly kingdom but yet we call him a king and in him we have had an example that as we have pursued him millennia after millennia, century after century, has elevated Europe into the envy of the world. As demonstrated by the fact that the world has voted with its feet to come and live amongst us. And I say that those Christians coming from around the world are most welcome and those who are willing to integrate into a Christian culture and society are most welcome. But those who are Islamists, who intend to bring Sharia law to these shores, we must make them feel unwelcome in our land. We must drive them out. We must drive them out. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus is our hero. We look towards our Lord Jesus Christ. God is King. 
Christ is King! 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 Who is the Who is the King of Arabia? Jesus! Christ is King! Who is the King of Arabia? Christ is King! Who is the King of Mecca? Christ is King! Who is the King of Medina? Christ is King! Who is the King of Muhammad? Christ is King! Who is the King of Aisha? Christ is King! Who is the King of Uthman? Christ is King! Who is the King of Ali? Christ is King! Who is the King of Umar? Who is greater than the Quran? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear, let's be clear. Their attempts to intimidate and mock, as you are seeing, is a demonstration of their supremacist mentality. They believe themselves to be better than you. They believe themselves to be over you. They believe themselves to have the right to bully you. I believe that you must not allow them to intimidate you. That if they try to bully you, you must stand up to them. Don't let them intimidate you. They're wasting their time, mate. They're wasting their time. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Good job, Bob. Okay. <laughs> questions going once. <laughs> Any questions? I can answer when you do. Okay. Yeah. Did we? Be eating halal meat? Questions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's being forced upon us every, everywhere we go, even it's in a our great restaurants. Question. Restaurants. Let's talk about aspects of Islamization and what we can do about it. Okay. One aspect of Islamization is that in schools and hospitals in the UK, halal meat is being pushed. You're not being told by halal, you're not being told that your children are being served halal meat. Or in the hospitals, you're being served halal meat. Let's be clear what's happening here. They are doing it because no one objects. Mm. They know that they can serve halal meat to you and you won't protest. But if they don't serve halal meat, they will, Muslims will protest. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you must all refuse to eat halal meat. Why? Here's why. Is it because it's got some kind of magic power? No. If there's no spiritual power in it, but the halal industry is connected to zakat, and the zakat tax is connected to Islamization. So every time you buy halal meat, you are funding Islamization in the land. You, ladies and gentlemen, must object to anyone trying to force halal meat on you. You must say no. You must demand that meat is free. Halal free meat. Ladies and gentlemen. Next question, ladies and gentlemen. Can you explain to everybody how they kill these animals as compared with the way we used to do it? So, ladies and gentlemen, halal meat is a barbaric, cruel act of slaughter in which the animal has its throat no, cut whilst it is still conscious. Look at the signs. Whilst it is still oh my conscious. Oh shut up for one In second, British but... slaughterhouses uh -huh. that are head. not halal meat, the animal is stunned. In other words, it is killed friend. before its throat oh, is cut. Yeah. When they slaughter with halal meat, the animal suffers distress yeah. as its blood and as it asphyxiates because its throat is slit, ladies and gentlemen. So if you won't boycott it for economic reasons, 
boycott it for animal care reasons. Well, can I expand on that question? Yeah, go on. Right. What is the animal rights society in this country doing about it? Are they too cowardly to speak no, up? They're, they're animal rights activists well. in the UK, yeah. who are usually left-wing, are not protesting this action. Because the left have demonstrated again and again and again just how scared they are to well, tackle Islamists inside. like that. Inside. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, how can we bring the Christian community together when there are so many churches? Can I get a bottle of water, guys? Here's why. Here's what we need to do. Thank you very much, sister. Here's what we need to do. We need to stop listening to leaders and to voices in the Christian community that are sectarian. Voices that want to pit Christian against Christian, we should ignore. And voices that want to unite Christians in standing in common cause, like being pro-life, like being pro-family, like being standing up for the persecuted church, these are the voices that we should rally behind. Our unity will be found on the street in our activism.